I want to continue our discussion of independence and in particular look at how we test for independence and illustrate uh, how to interpret the results. Now, previously we looked at the definition of two events A and B being independent. It depends on the definition of conditional probability. Uh, and the conditional probability of A given B is just the joint probability divided by the probability of our uh, given or what we know. And the idea behind independence is that the probability of A is not going to be affected by whether or not we know B or not. Now, I want to apply this to a set of uh, employment data here. This goes back to the 1990s, uh, and the numbers here are rounded off. Uh, they're given to the nearest millions or something. So the, the data is broken down by by gender, men and women, and the numbers of employed and unemployed, and, and totals out here. Uh, now, uh, the question we want to look at is, uh, is employment or unemployment uh, independent of gender? Well, we can make this maybe a little more precise and to fall into the categories here where I've got two events. Uh, we'll rephrase this to say, uh, is the event of unemployed uh, and say uh, male, the event of being male are these two events uh, independent? Now, to set this up, maybe we could uh, let A designate uh, the event of being unemployed, and we'll let B represent the event of being male. Now, uh, so the definition here tells us what we need to check. So to, to check this, okay, what do we have to test? Well, we have to look at the probability of being unemployed given uh, a person is male. Looks like I prefer to use the English things instead of, uh, instead of using uh, uh, symbols here. So what is that probability going to be? So we w want to look at the, okay, calculate this, we want to look at the proportion of males. So we look at males here. And we want to look at the proportion of males that are unemployed. So we see that's going to be three males, or three million actually, out of 64 uh, million. And we need to grab a calculator or something like that and calculate that out. That becomes uh, actually uh, 0.047, just to save a little time here, or 4.7%. Now, uh, we want to compare that with what? The probability of, since I have a little space problem here, we'll just say unemployed, which was the set A. Okay, so how do we calculate? the probability of being unemployed. Well, we looked at the total number of unemployed here out of the total population, and so we see that's going to be 6 over 117. And what does that come out to be? If I look at my calculator, uh, that comes out to be 0.051. So we see that that is actually greater than this. This is uh, not going to be equal, at least technically here. There's about four tenths of a percent difference between these. And so our conclusion there would be that there is uh, a slightly less chance
of being unemployed uh, if a person is male. Uh, slightly less chance. We'll maybe come back and look at that again later. Uh, now, the uh, let's look at this this type of incline. What we actually saw here in terms of drawing this conclusion, we looked at this conditional probability and the conditional probability of, let me see, this was A given B. Okay, the probability of A given B turned out in this case to be less than the probability of A. Okay, and our conclusion over here was that the uh, probability of A was slight, well, in this case, it was slightly less. It would be less than uh, the, the general population because of the inequality. Now, let's look at the other possibilities that could have occurred here. A given B could have been equal to the probability of A or we could have turned out to have the probability of A given B uh, to have been greater. So uh, certainly if we look at inequalities, these are the possibilities here. Now, if this had been the case, then our conclusion would have been, that's what we were trying to check before, uh, independence, we would have said A and B are independent, or basically the conclusion would have been that gender had no effect on uh, employment or unemployment. And if it had turned out to be uh, this possibility, then what would our conclusion have been? The conclusion would have been uh, that employment was uh, greater if one had been male. The conclusion here would have been that uh, uh, males had a greater unemployment. Now, all right, so we can see, depending upon what the inequality uh, occurs between these uh, two probabilities, how we can interpret them. Now, we have to be a little bit careful here because this data was rounded off to the nearest million from something, and there is really just a slight difference between this. And so uh, one thing you have to be careful about when drawing your conclusion is you might want to check the accuracy of the data. And how much, because we wouldn't want to make a conclusion based solely on round off error. And in fact, if we take a look at what we calculated here, if you take this number, this number was rounded off. If this had been uh, rounded down a little bit, and if I had been looking at 3.1 over 64, then that calculates out to be uh, 0.048, 4.8%. And supposing the 6 here had been uh, rounded up a little bit, and instead of 6 over 117, supposing this had been something like 5.6 over 117, when we calculate out that, guess what? That's 0.048 as well. And the two would have been equal. So one has, to, in, in that case, we would have concluded that gender had no effect on unemployment. So the moral of the story is here, you want to check the accuracy of the data before you draw conclusions. If the data is coming from some sort of statistical study, you want to make sure that the differences between the uh, two proportions here that you're looking at is not something that's going to occur just accidentally because of rounding off of data or because of the margin of error of the experiment. Okay, thank you.